Larry, I'm not going to drive you around like I'm your chauffeur. Get in the fucking front seat, all right? <laughs> you're not driving me around like I'm a chauffeur. With two minutes from, from the rehearsal hall. You know, what kind of person asks another person to drive them around like this? This kind of mentality is what's... Whoa, whoa, what kind of person is so insecure that they have to make somebody move into the front seat so they don't think that they're driving somebody around? No, the kind of person that's so insecure that needs to be driven around in the back seat, subliminally yeah, still telling to do me, with me that you need around. me to drive Why you around. Why don't leave my seat? Go into the front seat. Because I asked you to sit in the front seat of my car, and it's my car, and uh, it's my car. I make the rules, okay? Oh, you're making the rules? Yeah, we, yeah, we would have good. already very been there good. already. Yes, oh, yeah. you would have already. Very good, very, very good. good. Oh, you can't drive with somebody in the back yeah, seat. Yeah, you're such a baby. You're a, a, uh, I'm not you're a, a grown man baby. Are you saying I'm a man child? I'm saying you're a little baby. And I'll, you know what? Little baby wants to ride, we'll give little baby a ride. You know what? Okay? Little baby no, wants no, to walk. No, 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 little no, baby. Little no, baby's gonna no, walk. You know what? I should have brought my little baby seat for no, my, no, for no, my no, little baby. No, no, Mr. David, where where to now? Where to now, Mr. David? Oh, I know. I didn't read the rules getting into the car. Here we go. Driving Mr. Larry. Hey, take it easy, man. You're the baby. Oh, Larry. I'm the what? I'm the baby. Wait, yeah, you're the baby. What? Because I want to take a poll? That makes me a baby? No, because what? you're. No, you know what? what makes you a baby? What? The fact that you're a big, stupid baby. Oh, I'm a big, stupid. Look, yeah, look at this thing you're walking around with. A what? big sack on your back. It's in my neck sack. Hello and welcome to another episode of LGR Play. As always, I'm your host, Mark Hamer, and joining me today from the Codec Moments media empire, it's the man, the myth, the legend in his own lunchtime, it's downtown Andy Brown. Hello, Mark. How are you? <laughs> I'm very good. How are you? Lovely, thank you. Excellent. So, Andy, we've been playing video games. Specifically, we've been playing the latest Ubisoft open world adventure playground, Far Cry 5. I have been a, a, a game I was looking forward to so much that it was my joker in, uh, in my year of shame. So uh, yeah. it's, it's with some trepidation that I, I talk about it now. Well, might as well get out of the way. Do you think it was a wise choice of your joker in retrospect? Yeah, I do. It, it's a good game. It's a great game. I, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure it's a brilliant Far Cry game. But it's a brilliant game. Cards and Table, I haven't finished it yet. You you have finished it. No, I, I'm, I'm in the same boat. I haven't quite finished it. I'm a fair way through. I've had the ending spoiled for me. Oh, um, me too. Don't accident. worry. <laughs> right. So we won't won't spoil it for, for the viewers. But um, who'd, have, who'd have thought they're on an alien spaceship all along? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> who'd have thought the entire thing was about Brexit? Um, so... <laughs> Jesus, it's not that apocalyptic. <laughs> So uh, I take it you're well. You're a fan of the Frank of the Frank of the Far Cry franchise. I love Frank, and I love yeah, the Frank. I love the Far Cry. It's really hard to say. I love the Far Cry franchise. <laughs> Is it the same Frank who you had to talk to if you had drug problems? I think it's uh, it's the same one from that eighties pop song, right? Because drugs seem to be a recurring theme in the Far Cry series. Yes, yeah, certainly, and and this is this is no different, really. I suppose in the um, in the way they're using it to control the, well, I won't say the populace, but the the cultists. So, well, we might as well get into it. We'll get the 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 bad out of the way because I am about a third of the way through. I've decided to completely deal with everything in John Seed's region. The story is not great. So the premise is you're a U.S. marshal, yeah, um, who goes into this area, Hope County in Montana. You're a, you're a deputy <laughs> sheriff, aren't you? It's the, you're deputy you're sheriff, accompanying yeah. a U.S. marshal who's um, right. Who's going in to to do the dirty deed and, and arrest this cult leader, and then it, it just all goes badly, really. It it does go all badly unless um, the same as with Far Cry Four, you do nothing <laughs> at the beginning, uh, yeah. wait around for a few minutes, and then the game just ends in the credits roll. It goes it goes yeah. well for the cult in that case. Probably the better of the two endings, from what I've heard. Anyway, <laughs> um, so there was a lot of hubbub before this game came out about how. Far Cry uh, about how, Far Cry how uh, Ubisoft were going to be a bit edgy um, and maybe tackle race politics and the rise of the alt right in America. Now, whether they were ever actually going to do that or um, whether they ha had started to go down that route and then had second thoughts when Trump got elected or, or what, I don't know. But it's not about that at all, really. No, it uh, it doesn't quite live up to that expectation. And to be honest, if it if if they did properly commit to that, whilst I think it would be an incredibly polarising game, it would have been a lot more interesting. Yeah, that's the problem. At the moment, it's not that interesting. From what I've seen so far, it's just kind of a run-of-the-mill cult issue, just on a larger scale, rather than being them being in you know, like Heaven's Gate in one compound. It's an entire region of Montana, an entire county. Um, but the, yeah, the, the, the characters... From, that was the thing that struck me from the beginning um, 
your first few encounters with uh, is it Jacob Seed, who's the the head. Joseph, isn't it? Joseph, Joseph is right. the head. Yeah. And there's John, Jacob, and I can't remember the sisters. Name. Faith. Faith. Yeah. I thought he was just a really boring villain. Like every Far Cry yeah. game. Well, I say every Far Cry game. They're the main like Ubisoft Far Cry games. Three and four. I haven't played Primal, but three and four had really memorable villains. Three did for a while, at least. They yeah. Killed, they kill his. The, the, the most interesting character in that game off about a third of the way through <laughs> um, and Peg and Min in Far Cry 4 was was like sinister but also kind of entertaining hilarious character he was he was a great character but I, I totally yeah. agree with you that Vaz in, in 3 and even Citra was reasonably compelling yeah yeah the, 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 the characters have been interesting and f- and kind of fun and uh, not so much in Far Cry I mean Jacob I don't know he just with the glasses and everything he he looks like just looks like an accountant who's who's lost control of his faculties yeah I mean the, the, the only defining things about him are his sunglasses and his, and his top knot like there's nothing <laughs> really there there's, no, there's not much about his character at all which there's is no, kind of a shame there's no real depth to it and I was I was perhaps no. hoping that actually that would be fleshed out a lot more um, I'm not convinced it was. Some of the other characters, I think Jacob is the um, the brother who is a, a soldier, war veteran. He mm. was quite interesting in the way that his his character is dealt with and the things that he does to you are, are interesting. And that was a that was a nice take on it. John, I quite liked. I quite liked in the sense that he he was probably the most charismatic. Might be the wrong word, but he was like uh, he was like a TV evangelist on steroids. Through the power of yes, he's gonna torture the sin out of you <laughs> i did really like that idea and it was kind of almost a, a touch on um the modern cult of media and i thought you, yeah actually yeah. this this has shades of truth in it it was it was probably the most interesting of the of the three faiths as well with the the kind of more i think she, it was it was more clear there that you know it was it was chemical influence rather than um cult of personality so yeah the story overall i mean there's some interesting aspects to some of the characters but overall it's, i think it's the weakest aspect of the game but i think probably the gameplay more than makes up for it the gameplay yeah is brilliant i was really unsure before i thought it was going to be the other way around i thought the story was going to be when i thought it was going to be tackling modern american you know identity racial politics it was going to be an interesting story in a really boring environment because it's like you know you've been to the himalayas and you've been to a tropical island who wants to run around in montana with cows i thought that was going to be rubbish um and it turns out that actually the environment is varied and stunning uh i mean i think i think what it what it's a testament to is the fact that if you take any game and put a tractor with a thresher into it yes it is going to be a success so yeah that kind of brings on to the um the fact that this game it embraces the wackiness a bit like far cry 4 didn't far cry 4 kind of shied away from it a little bit there was some really wacky stuff in 3 remember that there was the mission where you burn down the fields of weed whilst listening to skrillex and that that whole that whole guy in his um in his kind of hilltop house with the conservatory full of his his homemade drug concoctions who just yeah. screamed hunter s thompson to me um mm-hmm. really yeah there, there was there were those elements in it and it, it made it a very interesting game um for yeah it was a bit more reserved but this one mm-hmm. this one does bring it i mean the the helping the guy create a teleportation machine is yeah yeah uh, well the, the, the first mission that i really got it was like oh okay they're going to go a little bit wacky with this, was when you free one of the towns in the southwest region, in, in, in John's region, and the guy's like, um, I need you to help me set up the annual testicle festival. The testy right. festy. <laughs> the testy festy, yeah. And like the first part is just go and rescue his, his old, like, a trailer barbecue thing. But then you had to um, to go and harvest some testicles, and then it's, it's the fact that you had to, you had to harvest some testicles from a bull that was in the middle of, uh, as he puts it, playing uh, hide the salami, uh, and then that like slow porn music starts playing in the background, and you have to uh, uh, kill one of the bulls with the with the um, aforementioned thresher on the front of the tractor. And I was like, okay. All right, this this game's going to have a little bit of fun then. There's a guy that you meet somewhere in, um, I think it's in, right. He's up in Jacob's region. His name's Chad. Mm. I don't know right. if you've come across him. I haven't been to Jacob's region yet. No. So he he runs like a barbecue truck called the 
uh, I think it's the grill, the grill steak or the grill, the oh, what's it called, the grill streak or something like that. And it's basically just it's just a mission where you've you've got to go off and just kill loads of animals. But he's like, oh no, make sure you use a big car because it tenderizes the meat really well. But his character just mumbles everything. You cannot actually make a word out. You have to say you, you have to have the subtitles on to to actually make out and understand what he's saying. But it's but it's this it's that tongue in cheek humor of uh, yeah, go off, collect me some meat and make sure you tenderize it with a van. Yeah. <laughs> or it's like one of the characters in town says, "Oh, my dad's old lorry called the Widow Maker is uh, being stolen. Can you go and steal it back?" And then you go and find it and it's just like the giant neon pink lorry with an American flag on the side and yeah. machine guns on the front of it. And, and a, then and a Vaz bobblehead on the dashboard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um it's very much like tongue in cheek. Now that does kind of uh, there's a bit of a jarring shift between like the outright humor and then the some quite horrific things that happen in the storyline, especially as I spent quite a lot of time down in John's region with outright torture. Yeah. I I mean I I think that's always been the key to the Far Cry to, I think that's always been the key to the Far Cry series though is that juxtaposition of the either the humor or the the kind of in, incredulity at everything that is going on around you that just seems a little bit insane mm-hmm. and the fact that you're stuck in the middle of it trying to basically generally trying to achieve what is a very personal and and quite motivated goal you know as um as Jason Brody, you were meant to be uh, trying to escape the island and rescue your friends. RJ Gale was uh, was trying to scatter the ashes of his dead mother. Yeah. Um, and then this one, I just I felt like the personal journey, the motivation wasn't entirely there. I, I got it from the sense of the community, but I didn't necessarily feel a part of that community. No matter how many times I'd liberate an area and they go, oh yeah, great, without you. But I, I didn't actually feel like I was necessarily part of that community. I didn't feel like they gave this poor, you know, rookie deputy sheriff enough backstory for me to really care. Well, they don't give you any story. Cause no. you, you, you play, no. this is the first time you play, uh, at least in the Ubisoft oeuvre, a um, nameless, voiceless character. And I think because I was a nameless, voiceless character and because the community obviously all, all liked me for what I was doing, what mm. I thought the game lacked was... It, the thing for me about Far Cry games is they always have a sense of isolation and alienation, so you always feel like you're a stranger in a foreign land. Yeah. And this one, I didn't get that feeling of alienation. You get the isolation at times because you know you're in a you're in a region of Montana. You've got no connection with the outside world. I didn't feel as isolated or alienated as I did in the other games, and that's why it didn't quite gel. As I said earlier, as a Far Cry game, it was a brilliant game, but actually, perhaps if they'd just given it. A new IP, or one of the things that that kind of struck me about halfway through was this would have been like a brilliant home front type game, <laughs> you know, like yeah. where you, you're building a resistance against foreign invaders or something like that. Actually, that that would have been a more interesting take on it to to give it a new narrative in that sense. But it was good. It was a really good game. I can't I can't complain hard about. It. I feel bad for for what I am saying about it but well yeah oh well you know he's harsh on the things we love <laughs> um and it is a franchise that, that i've had ups and downs with i i uh i ended up absolutely hating far cry 4 by the time i got to the end of it because i i think i left i did all the side stuff and then it's had a chunk of story to finish at the end and i'm hoping far cry 5 doesn't do this um but i've always enjoyed more these games playing trying to play them stealthy because the shooting's never felt great, but they yeah. always play well as a stealth, like a first-person stealth game. And I, you know, I love a good stealth game, so I try to play like that. And I hated it when the missions, when it forces you to go in, it forces you to go in like all guns blazing, machine gun in each hand. So I hope it doesn't do that too much. But it's, to be honest, I, it, I know it inevitably will. To be honest, it doesn't. It, it's pretty, uh, from what I've seen so far, is it is pretty good. But then actually, yeah. um, one of the most satisfying weapons in the game is is one of the light machine guns that you can pick up. And um, we talked about Ludo Narrative Dissonance earlier. You can put silencers on light machine guns and shotguns. Yeah. Well, there's a uh, rocket launcher that fires shovels, so... I, I, well, there we go, you see. Yeah. <laughs> Like that's the thing. It's like it kind of it it embraces the wacky. Uh, there's these little challenges all over the, the map where you get to relive in the game's um, lore some famous uh, stunt driver slash pilot. 
uh, and you reenact some of his stunts and things like that. And, um, yeah, the, the Clutch Nixon stuff. That's it. Yeah, Clutch yeah. Nixon. And I, there's just more like there's just more freedom. Um, I think that's more. In in Far Cry Four, you could get those little gyrocopter things. Yeah. Um, but they had a very low, like maximum yeah. ceiling before it would start beeping at you. And, and they'd, they'd also the explode sky. in you know moments' notice as well. I seem yeah. to remember. And they were horrible to pilot as well. Uh, and it was kind of difficult to get around that amount of terrain sometimes. But this is uh, there's a lot more freedom. You got planes, you got helicopters, you got. A, a whole plethora of different types of vehicle and they're all kind of they all feel good to pilot especially the planes i was quite surprised yeah yeah the, i mean the, the, what i love about the ubisoft games is they've got these different games and they have different helicopter controls in each of them because i remember when um yeah uh ghost recon wildlands came out the helicopter controls were actually quite novel and unique and they they did patch them later to make them a little bit easier to control um yeah I, I I personally wouldn't have complained about them once once you got the hang of it. It was you, you felt like you'd kind of mastered it uh, on the original yeah. control method. But these ones are, are slightly different again. Uh, but do you know what? Yeah, you're right. It, it does add that kind of sense of scope and and grandeur to the game to have that bit more. The maps never felt small in Far Cry games, but this one no. because you can get this up a bit higher, you can. It, it does, but then likewise, it doesn't. It doesn't feel as big as um, as Ghost Recon, and there's there's a lot no. to do in it. And I think that was the trouble with Wildlands was um, whilst there was a lot to do, and it was a huge map, um, a lot of it was very repetitive. And I don't I don't necessarily think that's true with with Far Cry Five. I think there's been a lot of no. variety in the missions and what you do, which is uh, which is a problem that the I mean previous Far Cry games have suffered from repetitiveness. Yeah. And this one so far hasn't had that at all. Like the missions have all been really varied and interesting. No, and I, and I think as well the, the other thing about Wildlands was you could you could easily just kind of bumble along and, and get a bit lost and not really achieve anything. Mm. And I do feel with Far Cry Five, even even when I'm bumbling, I feel like I'm achieving something because you're you're increasing the kind of um, the cult's reaction to you in the areas the. Um, the, the resistance level and, and everything like that. Uh, I, I wish they dialed down the the cult's aggressiveness a little bit. It's not it's not necessarily from a difficulty point of view. It just gets a bit annoying and frustrating when you you're simply trying to drive to a mission and all of a sudden you're surrounded by cult vehicles and um, and they're all expert marksmen and um, you know ace rally drivers. But at least on this one, you get to take along um, at, at, le at least two companions. At the point in the map where you, you can take two companions with you, I've always been going along with the dog who can helpfully sniff out all the enemies nearby. And I uh, can't remember the character's name, uh, the lady sniper. Grace, I think is. Yes, yeah, Grace. Um, and yeah, she's a really good shot, and the dog can sniff out all the enemies, and so. Uh, they've been a really good um, duo to take with me. I'm I'm a bit uh, undecided about that mechanic, if I'm honest. It's I've made use of it, and it it helps you get out of a bind. And there's some situations uh, where it's been, it's been really useful. There's others where you go into. Um, there's one thing where I went into a mission area, and they just disappeared. And I thought, actually, I could have done with your help here. Yeah. Um, yeah, the AI is not perfect. But what the AI? Yeah, the AI is all right. But what? I kind of miss is the the buddy system they had in Far Cry 2 where you'd think oh I am outnumbered here and I am I am in a seriously bad position I think I think I'm gonna have to kind of reload my last checkpoint and then you'd get pulled out of the firefight by your buddy who's just kind of appeared and I really I really actually like that system yeah I mean that gave me PTSD when when my buddy accidentally died <laughs> because of something stupid that I did in that game. So <laughs> yeah, I did have a moment playing uh, Far Cry Five yesterday, where uh, and there was this one NPC who kept running in front of my gun uh, <laughs> and then getting down. So I go and pick him up. Thirty seconds later, I'd be I'd, I'd be aiming down the sight. I'd get an enemy enemy's head in my crosshairs, pull the trigger, and his face would appear. And he'd be downed. Go and pick him up again. It happened like six or seven times during this fight. The same NPC just kept on running in front of my gun. So <laughs> yeah, the AI. It's not the greatest, but 
it's you know it's a new mechanic and it's kind of a welcome change it seems to be something that ubisoft are doing quite a lot recently finally acknowledging the fact that they had become horrifically formulaic and boring <laughs> and trying to do something to fix it and I, I hold my hands up to ubisoft because i'm sure we've all been there in the past and said oh you know they're possibly one of the worst gaming companies all they care about is money and annual iterations and mm-hmm. yeah the what they've what they've shown recently is actually they can they can take a step back and say right well you know we're being criticized let's actually do something about it and you know yeah. unlike other developers that i i won't mention um <laughs> but I, yeah. I and and even between even between the game now so they, they clearly are pushing everything to be open world they were getting bigger and and better and and now i think maybe they're getting to the point where well actually is is this big enough you know let's create a big enough space and actually mm-hmm. fill it with interesting stuff to do and um you know biggest isn't always best yeah i mean they've nailed that a big interesting space to explore and a nice you know very varied amount of missions they just need to work on the uh, NPC AI a little bit in those gunfights and write a compelling story. And I know that's easier said than (laughs) done. Uh, And they haven't managed to do it very often in any of their games. Um, But, yeah. I'm... I'm really interested in the DLC, if I'm honest. Yeah, that sounds like it's it's going full full on for the wackiness. Yeah, and I, I think this could be where that you know if you you think back to um, Blood Dragon that came out after Far Cry Three, okay, that was a standalone, but it was it was short, but it was very very funny. It was very yeah. it was a great little game built completely around the Far Cry you know three game, and, and I I'm very interested to see what they do around this. The other thing um, Ubisoft have been doing really well is these kind of timed multiplayer events, and I'm interested interested to see what they what they can bring to the table there because they've done some really interesting stuff in Ghost Recon. I hate sorry to keep banging on about it, but right, with the with game. the with the Predator event and the Splinter mm. Cell stuff that we talked about earlier, there's a lot of scope there for them to do something really interesting in 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 this kind of environment in Montana. But you know, as far as as far as the game goes, the world building, the music, it all it all ties in really nicely together. You know, they've got the um you walk around with the radio on in the car. You walk around in the car. You go in the car with the radio yeah. on, and you've got you've got their kind of uh, Eden's Gate country and western songs playing in the background. You know John's hymn, uh, yeah, Jacob's hymns, not Jacob, yeah. Joseph's hymns. Uh, and shout out to one of the radio stations on that. Actually, um, I didn't recognise any of the music uh, that they were playing, but then uh, Electric Worry by Clutch came on, and I was like, yep. <laughs> I'm on board. I like this. Yeah, uh, the, the, when you're out and about in the world, it's like the the ambient music that's playing and the sort of the, the setting and the kind of lawlessness feel of it all, kind of reminded me a bit of Red Dead. Yeah, that's that's where that sense of isolation comes in, where you where you go off the beaten track and start kind of wandering through the areas that you, you kind of think, am I am I ever going to be coming here as part of the, yeah. the story? That's that was always interesting because this. Even in those kind of wild areas, there's still a lot to do. There's a lot of things to find, animals and mm. random skirmishes going on between cultists and civilians that you can find, which is, is always really interesting. It's got yeah. those Far Cry moments. I don't know if you know what I mean, but those those completely unscripted moments that just seem to spontaneously unfold around you. I was doing. I was playing yesterday, I was doing a mission for um, the, the, the scientist, the guy who wants you to build the port, but who's trying to build the portal, basically. And he sent me off to go and turn on the various generators up at the power station so that you could power it. And instead of doing what I would normally do, jumping in the car and then driving around to it, I was like, oh, it's only, you know, 300 odd meters away. I'll just, I'll just go straight through the woods to go there. And on the way there, just stumbled across a small group of NPCs. And they were just sitting around a bonfire and one of the guys was playing um, Where Did You Sleep Last Night? <laughs> and I was like, this is... Yeah, this is kind of I cool. Think, like, if I hadn't gone through the woods, I, just, I wouldn't have seen that at all. Uh, uh, do you know, I came across exactly the same thing, and I clipped it. But <laughs> I don't know if this was the same in your game, because I was I was walking up to the same area, and I came across them, and they're just sat there. They've got a little campfire going, a little yeah. a little camp set up, and they're just having a lovely... Is it like a guy and a... There's like a couple who are clearly singing to each other and having a nice time, and then there's another yeah. guy who's kind of the third wheel, but there as well. Mm-hmm. Was it was it like that? Yeah, yeah. But in my version, there was also two like cultist corpses just littered across the floor, <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it just made me clip it because I thought this is the weirdest thing ever. They look so happy and so in love, but they are yeah. surrounded by dead bodies. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll have to go back and look at the if footage. Not, but if I, not, I might have it. I can send it to you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, yes, please. Yeah, I, I don't. Um, I didn't spot any corpses. <laughs> there was. I was. There was one moment. I was just. I was talking to um, you know the hunters who walk by who you can use as a shop. It just yeah. happened to rather than use the shop button, I accidentally hit the talk button. So I was I was stuck in there, a bit of dialogue, and all of a sudden they just this wolf just leapt up from behind them, yeah. completely out of view, and and took them out. And I was literally stood there for a minute, like, what just happened? Like you said, those Far Cry moments where all the random elements of this open world just start to clash uh, in hilarious ways. I, I've got to say as well, co-op in this game is fabulous. Yeah, really good, really good fun because it it kind of it takes that those far cry moments and then adds your stupid friend who just wants to try and <laughs> throw throw bait and set bears on you that kind of thing yeah <laughs> um, i have to give it a try it's, i was playing with um, with matt from codec moments and we were we were flying to a mission point in a in a seaplane i was looking at busy looking at the map because i was sat in the back and he was flying us I, I said oh there's some water down there i think do you reckon you can put it down in that river and he went oh yeah no problem and the next thing i know he's, he's got out of the airplane because he's hit the wrong button <laughs> um, and, and it's brilliant because I, I he's just fallen landed in a lake and survived no problem me the plane has gone into a death spiral spins around <laughs> twice and I'm just sat there going oh my god oh my god oh my god <laughs> and then I died in a plane crash and I just thought yeah there's not many games yeah. you could see that <laughs> no no I mean it's there aside from say GTA. Uh, I think there's probably more freedom to do really wacky shit in uh, Far Cry than there is in any other open world game. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. Yeah, <laughs> Ghost, go, you can do some really wacky shit in Ghost Recon as well. Actually, I really like it. It's a really good yeah. game. I think you know it could have if they'd have tweaked the story and done things differently. It could have uh, perhaps could have been better, but it's not bad. Do you know what I mean? It's not. I've, no. I feel. I feel bad complained about it because actually it's no, no. it's a pretty solid game and I think it's just if it had been a new IP and they'd um, they'd perhaps fleshed it out a little bit more I think it would have been really really interesting yeah no I mean um, I paid full price for it I am a fan of Far, of Far Cry franchise but I'm not I don't regret buy, buying it at all I, I really enjoyed it I mean if you're a fan of Far Cry you've probably already bought it um, if you're kind of lukewarm on the franchise, I'd say wait until it's on sale uh, and then pick it up because even if you just, you know, plow through the story and ignore what's going on, um, it's just a really fun sandbox to play around in and there's some really fun um, uh, and enjoyable side missions to do. There's so many different people and characters to meet in the community that it, mm -hmm. there will always be a set of missions or a person that you think okay yeah I can go on board with it let's put it this way it might be the only game I buy this year because because uh, I've played my Joker on year shame challenge 6 and I'm alright with that there's enough there to keep you occupied for a good long time and that's before we even mentioned Far Cry Arcade which is brilliant I can't believe we forgot that no no I mean I, I, I've seen uh, ways to get into it well it's basically just a series of different maps that are either created by Ubisoft or by the community mm -hmm. um, and there's various different game modes so you can have assault where you you basically just need to um, clear people out or capture an outpost um, you can have bounty hunter which is where you have to actually take out specific targets who are normally a little bit harder than um, than everybody else uh, you've got journey which is where you you just have to get to checkpoints and then get to an exit so you have to kind of follow follow waypoints and, and make your way through the game lots of little different game modes like that and then there's multiplayer games as well but it's it's just that it basically takes all the fun of replaying checkpoints from the original games but mm -hmm. puts them in new and interesting and user created maps there's some really interesting well, there's one which was made by ubisoft which is essentially a, a hollowed out volcano in a bond villain lair style <laughs> where you, you kind of start outside and work your way into this um into this place to take out a target. It's just, it's a brilliant map. Absolutely brilliant. It reminds me of back in the day when people were, were really heavily into modding uh, Quake and Quake 2 and, and creating maps for, for those kind of games or just the, the breadth of the kind of stuff you could get and, and just seeing what people have created makes you just think, oh, wow, that's that's impressive. Hmm. Um, it's really cool stuff in there. So, I mean, that's that's enough to keep you keep you entertained for hours. I won't, don't, uh, I won't, I won't sugar the pill. There's some, there's some pretty crap levels in there as well, but the good stuff's really good. So there is 
quite a lot to do in this game. It's quite a comprehensive package. Yeah, I, I would, I'd definitely say so. Yeah, I think it's um, if you pick up the special edition as well, I think you'll you'll end up getting Far Cry Three on PS4 as well when that's released um, mm. later in the year. It's just good fun, and I think that's the thing about a Far Cry. Game. You know, all right, I, I've had a go and said, oh well, it's not it's not necessarily Far Cry, enough. but actually, like I said, it's fun and it's got those Far Cry moments. So maybe I'm just being an ass. <laughs> no, it, it, it is exactly like, um, you, to be honest, no one really comes to a Far Cry game for a compelling story. Like, you expect slightly more interesting characters than this has, but you don't you don't expect like a world-class storytelling. Oh, no. uh, you come to Far Cry <laughs> yeah. to have fun in a giant playground and get assaulted by the wildlife and set fire to that wildlife. And that's exactly what you can do in, in Far Cry 5, but... Um, with more freedom, more scope, more toys to play with, uh, and a better looking environment. Yeah, and it's you know, it's more Far Cry. If you like Far Cry, it's more Far Cry. You know what you're getting. <laughs> if you like this kind of game, you'll probably like this game. Yeah, pretty much. I know <laughs> Sorry, sorry, <laughs> you just summed up the entire video in that, yeah. I'll just put that at the beginning. If you like Far Cry, <laughs> then you'll like this Far Cry. Skip to the end. Thanks for joining me, Andy. Uh, where can people find you and your various work online? Well, you can check out uh, codecmoments.com for our uh, well, our news and, and reviews. Uh, and occasionally we, we put out a podcast. We've been a little bit sporadic of late, but uh, if yes, you, you search, have. yeah, I know, I know. I've got one. Um, I've got one in the edit at the moment. So hopefully by the end of this okay. week, it, it'll be out. <laughs> But um, yeah, you can uh, you can search for the Codec Moments podcast in your your favourite podcatcher of choice. Oh, and listen to um, Year of uh, Year of Shame Six as well. Oh God, yeah, oh yeah, Kevin, yeah. <laughs> Kev will kill me if I don't give that a plug. Yes, Year of Shame <laughs> Year of Shame Challenge Six uh, is available now. We're um, oh shock horror. We're we're already through to May, and I'll, I'll give you a spoiler. Somebody has bought a game. It's not that much of a spoiler because I, I already told you it was me. Yeah, but you, you played your joke in this one. Right, well, that's it for this episode. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, then please do hit that like and subscribe button and leave us a comment with your thoughts on Far Cry 5. Uh, as always, you can find us on Twitter at Lapsed Gamer. You can listen to the Lapsed Gamer radio podcast on iTunes, Podbean, and now on Spotify as well. Um, you can email us. The address is lapsedgamerradio at gmail.com and you can visit our blog at lapsedgamer.com. So thanks very much for watching and we'll catch you on the next episode of LGR Play. Goodbye. Bye.